Hi YouTube, today we're going to be looking at Tracklib, a digital record store for sampling. They have over 100,000 tracks including multi-tracks and stems from all genres and decades and you can clear the samples in minutes at a very affordable price. Once we've looked at the full service, we're going to take this sample and we're going to flip it into this tune. Tracklib has a special sign up offer for attack readers. Sign up now using this link for a 30 day trial, including 15 free track downloads. Today we're going to be talking all about Tracklib. We're going to run you through the service, show you how the dashboard works, and then show you some sampling techniques in the context of dance music. We're going to use samples from Tracklib, obviously, and then make them work for us in Ableton Live. If you've already seen lots of videos of Tracklib online, then you'll know it's incredibly popular with the hip hop community. Sampling and hip hop have been best buddies since day dot. The sampling is just as ubiquitous in dance music and we're going to be making some house music with some of the tracks we favorited on Tracklib. In the tutorial aspect of this video, we're going to be covering side chaining, EQing, layering, arrangement, and a few other bits of magic to take a sample and really make it your own. Let's jump straight in. So what is Tracklib? Perhaps the best way to answer this question is what Tracklib isn't. It's not Splice and it's not Loop Masters. Both of those guys provide license free sample packs. Tracklib, however, is a record store for sampling. They're a sample clearance subscription service with every available song pre-cleared for use in music production. After you find a song you like, just download it. Use it in your music and when you're ready to release the track, register it with Tracklib so the copyright holder gets their proper revenue share. Tracklib offers you tracks you actually may know. There are hundreds of thousands of full songs, including from big names like Isaac Hayes, Bob James and Frank Dukes. And in some cases, you can even get the stems. So if you want a Frank Dukes guitar or synth, that's often possible, such as on screen now. There's even an extensive Bollywood section with the 1970s cuts by R.D. Berman. And if you don't know him, look him up. The man was a genius. Put it this way, record store shops have been closing in record numbers. Berwick Street in London was once called Record Street, but that's not the case anymore with only a handful of shops like Reckless Records still existing. If you want to go crate digging, you have to go online and Tracklib is providing that service. It's sampling heaven and it's going to really help make your track stand out. Before we go on, a quick word on the legalities of sampling. In case you don't know, sampling music created by someone else is copyright infringement. That's why Tracklib takes all that headache away from you so you can focus on making your best beats. Think about it this way, if you pay for what you use, you keep the money flowing in the industry, which in some small way helps keep the industry moving forward, which is what we all want. There really are a lot of what ifs regarding sampling. You might want to therefore take a quick read of our article, The Rights and Wrongs of Sampling on Attack. We've left a link below. The plans and pricing are quite clear. You have the standard, you have the professional, you have the essential. Standard is the most popular, it's £13.99 a month, but there's a saving if you pay annually. For that you get 15 track downloads a month and you get 2 feature tracks per month. The professional option, you get 35 track downloads a month with 2 feature tracks per month and that's £29.99 a month. They also offer you a free trial so you can get more familiar with the service and get a better understanding of how you want to use it and how often you're going to use it. Let's check out this dashboard. You've got inspiration, all tracks, collections, genres, artists, labels. And if you scroll down, it also follows the same pattern. You've got inspiration here, look, sample of James Brown and Sedan, dig into Brazilian vaults of YB music. You've got track highlights, you've got theme collection, things like reverse collections, you've got funky and soulful records collections, sunny day collections, you have monthly digs, you have the sounds of certain labels, in this case it's the classics from some records. You've got most popular, you've also got newly added, which is a really cool function if you want to stay ahead of the trends in music production sounds. And then you've got inspired collections, and our attention was taken by Beyonce and Burial. Beyonce because she's such a big name and the, some of the samples are absolutely brilliant, but Burial is an electronic music hero and we were very curious to see what's in here. So these are the sounds and samples that Burial would have used. Check this one out for example, it's absolutely brilliant. Awesome. If I wasn't making this video, I'd just stop recording right away and get making music. Check out this one. The word around this town is you've been doing me wrong. I mean, that's got house music written all over it. And what we particularly like about this, it's always great to hear good singers without auto-tune. 
What else have we got? We've got Night at the Seaside. That one's got ambient written all over it. And if you like them, you can just add them to your favorites. Once added, you can click over here and check out your favorites. Once you purchase them, you have a separate section for purchase tracks here. Lastly, on the dashboard, you can start a new collection as well. So you can name your collection and you can describe it and you can make it public, private, or unlisted. And public is quite cool. You can share your sample sounds with your followers. Private is great because you can share it in advance of a session. So if you're trying to get ahead of a session, you can say to your artist, hey, these are the samples I'm going to be working with. Check them out here on Tracklib. The one thing that doesn't feature on the dashboard is the genres. We're just going to have a little look through here. It's split up in ways that you would imagine. You've got electronic, rock, blues, children's, and there's some really cool stuff here. I mean, you've even got classical. So if you go in here, have a listen to some of these. Sounds amazing. And then you've got some strange things like children's things. And I promise you there'll be a sample god who will be able to flip some of this stuff into the best of music. <laughs> who knows, when you reverse it, pitch it down, it could sound very cool. What else have we got in here? Jazz, R&B, soul, reggae. you got some Latin stuff. Let's check it out. sounds great that one's definitely going into our favorites so as you can see there's absolutely bucket loads of music here and there's definitely something for everyone one of chatlib's newest features is the beat machine this fun thing will basically provide you a context much like we do on a tap when we show you how to make something and then show you it in the context of a song chatlib is doing the same and it's pretty cool in essence it's like a built-in drum machine so let's check out a sample. Here is one from our favourites and let's select two bars. You'll see Tracklib sets loop points for you and you can choose between two, four and eight bars. Now let's check out this two bar loop. It sounds like this. And now let's choose four bars. Now let's scroll to the bottom of the dashboard and right by the sample player you'll see the beat machine. In beat machine you have four different drum options, early house, trap essentials, boom bap and simple four to the floor kick drums. Sticking with the sample we've chosen, let's flick through some of these options. Here's house on two bars. Here's trap on two bars. Let's now check out another sample and run you through how that sounds. Here is another one we saved to our favourites. Here it is with house on four bars. Here it is with trap on four bars. Here it is with kick on four bars. Here it is on double speed. The last thing we'd say about Beat Machine, it has this pretty cool ducking feature. Essentially, this is side chaining, which we're going to cover, but it's really helpful for adding that context. By our ears, it appears to side chain to the kick drum. Take a listen to the ducking effect. If you choose classic boom bap, it's got that real J Dilla vibe. So 
that's everything we're going to cover in the dashboard. It gives you a ton of options and it is a record store in your pocket. Now we're going to choose a sample and we're going to put it to work. In the tutorial part of this video, we're going to take a sample that we favorited on Tratlib and we're going to try and make it work with this drum pattern. Firstly, let's check out this drum pattern. We made it with the 909 flavor kit and the BPM is 125. Anything we're going to cover today can be easily recreated in any DAW. We're not using anything that's specific to Ableton Live. And lastly, the types of techniques that we're going to cover are probably best for novices or entry level music producers or maybe people with intermediate skills. So to begin with, we want to take our sample from our downloads and add it in. Now once the sample has been added in, if you have warp mode turned on at Ableton Live, it's going to immediately sync to your BPM of the project. So we're at 125, the BPM of the file is 114, but if we press play, it should sync nicely. Let's check it out. We were listening to it in Tratlev using the beat machine and the part that we liked was not actually this section of the song. Although that sounds great, we wanted to use something else and we think it's here. That's correct. So we wanted to take this bit here and we wanted to make that an intro followed by a verse. So it would, look, it would sound something like this. Let's play it from the intro. Sounds awesome with the sax, with the drums, it just sounds really, really cool and got a real summery vibe. Now the first thing we would do with a sample like this is just try and make it fit better with the drums. So I'd grab a compressor and we're going to try and sidechain it to the kick drum. Now sidechain is one of those things that people overcomplicate and maybe think it's a bit more, uh, just a bit more arcane than it needs to be. So we're going to try and break it down as, and make it as simple as possible. If you, if you open up the compressor here, click sidechain and then you want to sidechain it to your, your kick drum. Bring up your drums channel there and then find your kick drum. Here it is here, the post mixer kick drum, the kick on the 909. To show you a ex really extreme setting of it, we're going to pull the threshold down as far as it will go and you're only going to barely hear the sample. But you should get the idea that that sample is now being squashed by the kick drum. So they're working together. When you do the side chaining, you, you want to work closely with the threshold, the attack and the release. They're the three key parameters. So let's just move this threshold up ever so slightly and try and find a sweet spot before we mess with any of the other parameters. That sounds pretty cool. The next thing we would do is work with the attack and the release, which is just going to basically affect the timing of this side chain. So we're going to make it even tighter with the drums. And you can go both ways. If you want it slow, then increase the attack. If you want it to be working quickly, decrease the attack. Let's just mess around with it slightly. Firstly, we're going to reduce the attack. We're also going to reduce the release. And to give you an idea, if we would increase this attack by totally, it will completely reduce the effect of the side chain. You can hear there that that pump has gone. Bring it back and the pump will return. Now with Ableton, they give you a gain on the side chain as well. So you can increase this gain and it will, it will push the side chain further. Check it out if we push it to max. Now just press the 
fresh out of it. So you can see just a few steps and we've got it sounding much tighter to the kick drum. So I'm going to play the first four bars without the side chain and then we're going to turn it on for the second four bars so, so you can hear the difference. So as you can hear, in just a few steps, it's sounding much tighter to kick drum. It's got that pumping French house sound as well. Now that the sample is sidechained closely to the kick drum, we want to add in a filter so we can take out just some of the low end which we want to add in a bass line a little bit later. We have the filter open here. Let's roll in the high pass filter and bring it down somewhere around 180, somewhere around there. Let's have a listen to see how that sounds and see what we're working with here. Okay, so let's go too far, way too far. an idea. A lot of low end coming through there. That seems about right to us. Now that we've compressed it and added in a side chain and we've removed some low end, the next thing we're going to do is pitch the sample. It's very easy. You can go in here and you've got a pitch function here and you can go up, down and you can do anything with it. So let's see how it sounds if we reduce it maybe by 10 semitones. Also go full chipmunk mode. Let's see how that sounds. What we found playing with this sample a bit earlier is we liked it at plus five. It adds a real upbeat, adds some summery vibes, and it takes us to the direction of the track that we wanted to go for. Check it out. <laughs> Now that the sample is exactly where we want it, it's time to add in a bass line. And we're going to add in two. We're going to add in one deeper than the second one, which is going to be an octave higher. We've pulled up this sub sign bass that's available in Ableton Live. We haven't changed the settings at all. It's straight off the bat and it sounds like this. You might need some headphones. As we've pitched a sample, we're going to have to go from A minor to D minor because we've pitched it up five semitones. When you're recording a bass line, sometimes it's good to play up the octave like this because you're going to have an easier time hearing it. But I think with the headphones I have on, I might be able to hear it. Let's have a go at trying to record a bass line. Okay, there's a couple of bum notes in here. We're just going to go in and have a listen and see which ones we can fix up. So let's play it back. That one's going to sound better down the octave. And probably that one too, it's the same note. And probably this one. This, this looks to me like this probably should be the same rhythm for a bit of continuity on our tune. So let's just move these things across like that. We've got ourselves a bass line. The next thing I would do is I would double this bass line onto this other tune and it's the same part but it's going to be played an octave higher. So let, let's do it up. Now let's hear how they sound together. Let me turn the volume of this one down. You can see now bring it back in. And 
and also you can add in some chorus here just a small amount of chorus not too much we'll just reduce it a bit I think there's a bum note in here somewhere there there so that means we need to change it in both so let's bring this one up as well there we go now let's hear how it sounds with a sample <laughs> Sounding pretty good. Okay, the next thing we're going to add in is a piano part. And don't be worried if it all sounds quite cluttered to begin with. This isn't going to be a mixing or a mastering tutorial. We're just trying to show you how you can quickly layer other parts onto a sample. Then, of course, you can keep the sample or you can tweak the sample. You can even take out the sample and keep your separate parts. So we've loaded up a piano. It's just a standard grand piano that comes in Ableton Live with just a tad of reverb. We're going to try and play in a piano part and then we're going to edit it slightly. Let's have a go. Okay, so it's pretty close to what we're looking for. I like this flam here at the beginning. So I'm just going to add in a tiny bit of flam to the other notes. Not much. You can use arpeggiator and note repeat to do this. And there's some good Macs for live devices as well that do this. Certainly the piano roll is not as advanced to my knowledge as it is in Logic with flam. But with a couple of simple manual amends, you can do it just as, far, just as well. This one needs to be a bit nearer the grid but not entirely on. Move that slightly. Move that slightly and that one slightly. This is a bit overkill. Pretty good, sounded pretty decent. Let's check it out. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to try and take another sample and try and layer it on top. We're looking for some vocals. Now, if you think back to the earlier in this video, we really like that burial track, so we saved it as a favorite. If we go into our favorites, let's see where it is. Here it is. Hold on to your good thing, Laura a cappella, and we know it's pure vocals. So we're just going to download that. Now that the sample's in there, it's probably going to sound pretty bad straight off the bat. So let's have a listen and see how it sounds. The world around the sound is, you've been doing me wrong. The thing I'm hearing lately. Okay, not great. It needs pitching. Let's pitch it and see if we can get it to work. The world around the sound is You've been doing me wrong The thing I'm hearing lately Is to bring your body home I need to know now, baby Will you be the one I need to Okay, that first bit at six seven tones up sounds pretty good and I think it also sounds good here. awesome okay so look let's just take that first bit and that bit and let's also take the very very end bit as well so now we have this Okay, that could work. First thing, let's definitely put some reverb on it. Let's also add in some filter. And let's see what some echo sounds like on it as well. We definitely want to reduce some of that. We want it to be quite high frequencies. And we'll leave the echo on default and we'll leave the reverb on default for the time being. <laughs> Sounds 
Sounds pretty cool. Okay, now that we've got the vocal sounding pretty cool, let's try and add in some piano stabs. Again, we might not keep these, but we're just we're just jamming with our tune, jamming with our sample to see what we can come up with. So let's try and put in a piano stab. Okay, now let's quantize these and add some groove. Let's listen to them on solo quickly. Probably going to sound better down the octave, so let's just pull them down. Not a great sounding piano sound, but it's gonna just the best we have for the time being. And a dodgy rhythm in there. I think it's there. Ooh. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we're just going to try a little arrangement feature here. So we're going to take our sample that we've got, and we're going to copy it over, and we're going to add in half time. Half time is a effect that's used all over hip hop and trap, but it sounds also really great in dance music. And there's lots of different ways of doing it. You can you can uh, time stretch a sample if you like, but of course the Cable Guys have got this really powerful plugin that works a treat, and we're going to use that. So we're going to automate it so it turns on for these second eight bars. There you go. And now we're going to copy this drums over. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, let's check out this intro. We haven't listened to it in a little while. Let's have a quick play of it. I mean, it sounds pretty cool off the bat because it's a great sounding sample. I would probably just chop these up like that and then just reduce them. So there's a bit of space. And then what I'll probably do on the track is add in an echo and we're going to automate it at that point. So let's find our echo device on. So let's turn it off in every other part of the track and just have it on there. And then maybe let's add in some panning as well. So we're just going to overdo it a little bit just to see how this might sound. These little tweaks to a sample can just give your sample that extra little bit of life. It just keeps people's focus on the tune a little bit more. Okay, let's hear how that sounds.
let's try an instrument and let's go for something like pigments you can try anything you want Everything here sounds like if we take out the sample entirely and just keep these vocals in and let's copy over our drums and our bass lines. I hope you find some of these tips helpful. We've covered just tweaking an audio file at the intro just to give it a little bit of interest before the before the drop. We've pitched a sample, we've sidechained a sample, we've added layers and we can take the sample out and we keep the layers. And we've also added a vocal chop that we've put in the top of a layer. And we've kind of got a full track that needs a bit of work. If I was to continue this tune, I'd be working further on the piano stabs to give it some extra life. It's not quite sitting like we want, but for the purpose of this tutorial, Hopefully it's given you a few tips and points as to how you could use Tracklib, layer your samples, and then after this you just go ahead, take your track, register it, give the correct credit to the, to the creator, and away you go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time.